Good afternoon. Today is the 21st of July and uh, this is Barron's Classic Car Auctions at Marchwood near Southampton. It's a bit quieter here than usual. There doesn't seem to be so much activity going on in the boat building in businesses um, behind us. So hopefully a quieter video than usual today. This is the uh, July 2023 sale preview. I do apologize in advance if I get things wrong, if I fall over, if I just generally make a mess of it. That's just a way that it goes on this channel. One thing that's caught my eye immediately is lot number 120. It's this 1978 Renault 5 um, GTL. This is the uh, 1289 cc Cleon Font engine, and it's been in the same family, I think, for over 40 years. It's been in a garage though um, for about 20 years, and it's being sold as part of a deceased estate. Apparently, this thing actually does run and drive, which is Incredible, really. It, it's sort of survivor car condition. I don't know what it's like underneath or whether it's going to need any welding, but you know, it, it's just wonderful. The patina, it's, it's had some filler and things like that. Let's see if it's open. Look at that. Renault 5 dashboard back in the day was quite something. When these cars were launched in 72, the um, gear lever sprouted out of the dash, but later ones like this have a floor gear change. It's just wonderful, isn't it? Everything about it, the uh, big rubbing strips on the side, the little push button to open it and things like that, the reversing lights, integrated number plate lights, the original dealer plates in Renault Birmingham. It's just amazing. Also amazing is this lot number 101. It's a 1989. Mercedes 190e. It doesn't actually list the engine capacity of this car anywhere on the website um, with the uh, kind of uh, electronic catalogue that I'm using, but I'm assuming it's for two litre. It's very similar actually to a car that I drove in 2021 on the channel, which belonged to Simon of Lot 76 cars, but his was in you know better condition than this one. Like that Renault 5, these, uh, this car's been offered no reserve. Paintwork's not the best, there are some bits of rust and things like that on it. Uh, again, deceased estate. Um, both these cars will need some work for their MOTs, I think. Although, you don't think you need an MOT on the Renault 5, but I would recommend it, obviously. But yes, it could be good. It, it uh, has a sort of vinyl interior, this one. It's like a sort of red vinyl interior, which is um, unusual. We've also got this uh, 2002 Audi TT 1.8 Quattro. This is the 225 brake horsepower version. It's got some aftermarket wheels on it, and um, I, I don't know if I like these particularly. Obviously, it doesn't matter, really. Some of you um, will like them. Some of you maybe not. The guy price of this car is only one to two thousand pounds. The mileage is, I suppose, not too bad for the year. It's one hundred forty-five thousand, but the uh, two two fives with these twin exhaust pipes are quite desirable, really. Let's just see if it's got anything else in the description here. Uh, yeah, it's got the uh, nineteen-inch dots alloy wheels, original CD stacker, paintwork's not perfect. Um, but uh, it has had a new Campbell water pump 19,000 miles ago. That's handy, isn't it? Next, another Mercedes, uh, lot number 136. This is a 2000 Mercedes Benz E240 Avant Garde automatic. Estimate is between three and four thousand pounds. One owner previously uh, with 79,000 miles on the clock. This does look in quite good condition. Those alloys probably going to need refurbishing or just leave them as they are. It depends how good you are at parking, I suppose. Not got leather interior on this, so you could obviously get one for one of these. I think this is the uh, facelifted uh, W210 model um, from what I can see. That actually does look in really quite nice condition. Lot number 142, a 2005 Mercedes-Benz CLS, offered at no reserve. This one very much appeals to me because it is dark blue with a beige leather interior 
and wood. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. It is uh, one of the most agreeable things in the automotive world. Mileage on this is 166,000, so it is quite high. I think we've seen this before, actually. You do get multiple entries um, for the same price with uh, Barons. I think it's three you get um, without having to pay any extra. So why this hasn't sold? I don't know. As you know, viewers, we do very much like cheap MGs on this channel. And uh, this 1996 MGF with the 1.8 VVC engine is cheap. It has a guide price of between 700 and 1500 pounds. As far as I can see it in here, it has had the head gasket done. It has had the uh, hydro gas suspension worked on and it's only covered 73,000 miles. It's actually had a new battery, it's had a new, some new brakes and a clutch in the last 18 months. Why this is still here, I don't know. It's one of these things, viewers, um, we're gonna just find this as a theme as we go round. Why haven't you lot bought this already? Because I might. 2004 BMW uh, E46 318i convert uh, CI convertible. This is estimated between 1,800 and uh, 2,800 pounds. Again, I think we have seen this before. I don't know why it's still here. Principally because we have a beige leather interior and it's a manual. I know this is only a 318. But this would make a fantastic sort of summer car, or increasingly, E46s are getting to be popular show cars. And this, it's not a perfect example by any means, but that would be great. It would be also quite good on a daily basis, I think. It depends how much you like your open top motoring. Next, we have this 2006 Ford Mondeo Mark III ST220. It's a very late. Um, Mark III actually. They finished I think the next year in 2007. This one has done 87,000 miles. The guide price is between three and a half and four and a half thousand pounds. This is a really popular colour for them as well I think. I forget the name of this blue. My instinct tells me this might have been registered initially by Ford UK themselves on this Essex plate but I am not entirely sure. MOT expires April 2024. Looks like it's ready to go. It's also got parking sensors on it, viewers, which if you're bad at parking, as I am, um, you definitely need in a relatively large car like this. But that looks that looks great. I mean, these are only going to go up in value, I think, as all sort of fast forwards eventually do. Another sort of decent starter classic uh, these days would be this R50 Mini Cooper. This is a uh, 2002 car. It has uh, 69,000 miles on it. And it's up for between fifteen hundred and two thousand pounds, which is bordering on no budget reviews territory. This one, and uh, yeah, I mean, you obviously got to make sure that this doesn't have any wiring problems. It's been properly serviced. This is a sort of classic colour combination for these. Lot number one three one. This uh, nineteen seventy four Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser. The guide price between. Seven thousand and nine thousand pounds. It's very hard for me to value things like this because I'm I'm really not particularly um, au fait with stuff like this. But this thing is enormous. The uh, listing here in the catalogue says that it's just had over two thousand pounds spent. I think someone decided to leave the patina on it as original, which is fair enough. Why well, it says it's a 74, it has a 73 on there, I, I don't know. Perhaps it's a 74 model year or something. Next to it, we've got something else that uh, will have come over from the United States or maybe Canada, uh, which is this big Ford F-150. This is lot number 130. A guide price, well, it's no reserve. Uh, this is a, a 97. It's a 4x4 supercab pickup, needing some paintwork. Yeah, I think we can see where the paintwork is going to be needed, viewers. It's not really my kind of thing particularly. It's it's enormous, and um, the running costs on this would be somewhat prohibitive. But it is um, 
it's sort of wonderful really, even so. And uh, it has um, 129,000 miles on the clock. Look at this fuse, 1954 Triumph TR2. Apparently it's only got 39,000 recorded miles on it. So something that's, gosh, 69 years old, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, actually it's in very nice condition, which is reflected in the guide price of between 20 and 23,000 pounds. This is all English white color with the red interior. It's, it's such, a, such a classic combination, isn't it? You've got leather straps on the bonnet there. So this is a uh, 1970 Volkswagen Sam replica. It's the uh, splitty, actually. It's a very late splitty, suggesting it wasn't made in Germany. It was made somewhere else. This is something that we've seen many, many times before um, at the auction house. I don't know why nobody's bought this. It's in extremely good condition. There are one or two bits to do to finish this off, but it is really nice. The guy price at the moment is between twenty-five and thirty thousand pounds. It's not really my kind of thing particularly, but I'm sure somebody will like this. My favourite view is because of uh, the ultra limited expansion and the Mayor of London's nefarious schemes. We are unable to talk about this Toyota because we don't talk about diesels on this channel. Next, we have this uh, 1989 Ford Escort. XR3i Mark IV Cabriolet. This is in a delicious two-tone combination. Around 1990, a lot of manufacturers are offering cars in two-tone, and Ford were one of them. I think, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. I think the guide price is about right for one of these, actually, three and a half to 5,000 pounds. There was a Mark IV XR3i Cabriolet in here for a, actually quite a while. Um, I don't know why they didn't sell, but look at these kind of amazing kind of contrasting colour bumpers and things like that. I mean, this is, again, one of these cars that uh, I actually really like this. And uh, if you lot don't buy this, then I might be a bit tempted. Also got cassette storage down there and everything. That is, um, that looks really, really good. I love these wheels on it too. So next is this 1976 uh, Triumph Stag Mark II. Paintwork is quite good on this. If this is a, you know, on the cheaper end of, um, of stags, but it's still recently had um, new differential stainless steel exhaust, oversized radiator, electronic ignition, new timing chain, front disc, calipers, pads, hoses, track rod ends and ball joints, stone rack gator, oil filter and oil coolant and the carbs tuned with a wheel shot blasted in the last six months. You can buy stags for less than this. I mean, you can buy them for under five grand sometimes. Um, this isn't a concourse car by any means or a stretch of the imagination, but that is, that is pretty nice. Mileage on this is about 102,000. And I see we've got a little luggage rack on it. Having driven a, a stag quite recently, um, this one's a manual, the one I drove an auto. Again, that's... Um, that's pretty nice, actually. I don't think we've had too many of these, actually, uh, at the auction so far. This is a, a 1953 Riley RME, lot number 121. Estimate on this is between five and a half and seven thousand pounds. I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks very, very sort of early 50s in this dark color and also with this amazing interior full of wood and leather, exposed door hinges and all sorts of things. It's one of the last of the, uh, the uh, Rally RMs, I think, I think, especially in 55. It's not perfect by any means. You can see there's probably some work to be done sort of there and things like that. But, yeah, that's just such handsome lines on this car. Next is a Javelin from 1953. I think this is the last year they actually made these. Uh, the complex sort of construction of the car and the, and the engine, most parts of which you know were sourced locally to the Jowett factory in, uh, I think it was near Bradford, um, resulted in the company going under and you know the Jowett, Javelins and the Jowett Jeepers not being made anymore, which is a shame. 
This one's up between 4,000 and 5,500 pounds on the guard, guide price. It looks to, to me to be pretty good. I don't know what these are sort of were particularly. Even the chrome's got some deterioration on it, but that's not a huge problem. Very, very nice sort of uh, interior and dash, and wood dash. I saw one of these at the BMC Leyland show, actually. I don't know if this is the same one or not. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. It could be. Um, it looks, it looks good. This colour is a bit different from a lot of the sort of early 50s. You know, dark colours as well. Another one along the lines of, you know, why haven't you lot bought this, um, is a 1964 Ford Thunderbird. We've seen this ever so many times at this place. The uh, sort of cousin of this, there was another Thunderbird here, an earlier one, um, has gone. So that must have sold. This one has not. And it's a shame. The paintwork is by no means perfect. It's, it's not very easy to actually see that on camera, um, but it does have some sort of kind of places where it's, it's sort of gone flat and all sorts of things. But what a car. As we've seen in previous uh, videos we've done here, it's got all the features, power, everything. And yeah, 14,500 to 17,000 pounds. Wow, this is an unusual color for one of these. 1972. Aston Martin DBS V8 Auto. I'm not sure if this is just a really late um, Aston Martin V8 or DBS V8. It's a late DBS V8 or just an early V8 as they call them. I'm not actually sure. Somebody can tell me. I like the wheels on this. Uh, Estimate is between 48 and 53,000 pounds. To me, it doesn't sound too bad for one of these actually. Twin fuel tanks, of course. It looks like the car from the Persuaders a bit, but it had a different front end from this. Um, that is, well, that's really nice. I'd like to go with one of these, actually, at some point in my life. I'm not sure I've actually ever seen one of these before in real life years. This is Lamborghini Espada. This is a uh, 74. The guide price is between 63 and 70,000 pounds, which I think um, for a car in this sort of condition, in fact, it's... Uh, this amazing looking 70s Lamborghini. I think that's pretty reasonable, really. It's not quite as iconic as the Mura, but one like that, it looks like it's a real four seater, and it is. Interior looks really good. Uh, my job on this is about 34,000, according to the dial. I can imagine this sounds astonishing as well. That's a, that's a really classy looking car, isn't it? Now, not everything um, actually in here is for sale at the moment, and not everything in the sale is, is here. Uh, it's always the way um, when, I, when I come here, which is understandable. So the Carmen gear in the background is not for sale, but this Saab 93 is. It's a 2000. I have driven, actually, one of these on the channel, and it was great. It was an SE like this. I'll just look and see exactly what engine it has. It'll have probably the, the two-litre Saab H engine in it. Um, most of them... Did. Yeah, it's still grey metallic and 60,000 miles, new MOT, no advisories. Yeah, it doesn't actually say. Uh, Cat N uh, was on it a few years ago, it's just worth bearing in mind, but it looks like it's been repaired properly. This one's an auto. I think the one I drove was a, was a manual, I can't remember now. I've driven so many cars, I've always got cruise control. I quite like this view. I think my preference for one of these is the um, is the three door hatch, but this is this is very nice too. Lot number one two seven, uh, a 1961 Jaguar Mark II 3.4 manual with overdrive. Yeah, certainly is that is in. Lovely condition. The um, front seats have been sort of changed for more modern ones, I think, with the uh, head restraint. So that's not necessarily a problem. That's probably a good idea, really. That is in, yeah, it's in really nice condition. Uh, estimate is between um, 15 and 20,000 pounds. 1951 MGTD, 15 to uh, 18,000 pounds. Again, rather like the TR2. This is uh, like it's an old English white or off-white colour with the red interior. 
So a little bit older, 51, but yeah, but it looks, looks very nice actually. Uh, what's the mileage on there? About 33,000 or so. So 1955, Austin A30. You can tell it's the A30 actually by the smaller rear window and the different grille. This is the rarer um, four-door model. They made a two-door. Um, the the four-door is a bit rarer. One of the doors, I think, has been changed. You can see the colours slightly different. The estimate of this is only between three and a half, four and a half thousand pounds, which I think is pretty reasonable, something like this. These cars are very, very basic. Um, vinyl seats, really not much in the way of luxury. But nevertheless, that is um, pretty amazing, really. Once again, we have this uh, 1998 BMW Z3 um, that's been sort of converted with a kit called the Tribute Automotive Z300S. It does retain bits of the Z3 interior, but uh, other bits of bespoke, look at those instruments and the seats and everything else. Estimate uh, on it is between seven and 9,000 pounds. It actually looks very much like one of those cars from a sort of 50s, but you know, it's based on a, on a 98, so it should be a bit easier to find parts and things like that. 1993 Jaguar XJS convertible facelift. This is the uh, four litre six cylinder engine, but more importantly, viewers, it has a beige leather interior with wood. That is um, really nice. Four-speed auto, I think, in this one. This is um, the sort of final facelift, I think, for these. Uh, production finished in 1996. The colour is is <laughs> just amazing. Um, estimate between 11 and 14,000 pounds. That's um, hmm, rather tempting. 2007 uh, Westfield SEI W. Um, obviously, Q plates must have been um, put together by by somebody. Estimates between eight and uh, ten thousand pounds. Let's just check to see what engines in this. So yeah, it's a two-litre Ford ZTEC R engine with Weber carbs. I bet that is extremely fast on a track. 1969 Marcos GT3 litre. I presume that's a three-litre Asics. I think they put a Volvo engine in these later as well, but I think that's the uh, three litre Essex as far as I know. This set of body off rebuild, uh, it's very, very low. I think I'd have problems getting in and out of that myself quickly. Interior is it's amazing, look at that massive transmission tunnel in there. So go price of this is between 13 and 15,000 pounds. Certainly stand out in a car like that. It would also stand out in this 1979 Volkswagen Beetle Cabriolet. This will be one of the last of the uh, German built cars by Carmen. I think production finished either 79 or 80 for these um, in those places. Obviously, Beetle production in general continued till 2003. This is actually in exceptional condition. It's, it's perfect, really. Um, estimate on this is between 15 and 17,000 pounds. 1952 Talbot Sunbeam, or Sunbeam Talbot, it should be Sunbeam Talbot 90. Because a Talbot Sunbeam is something very different. So Sunbeam Talbot 90. This uh, was restored um, in the 1990s. But it still looks really good. The has got a bit of patina out of the seats. But it, it, looks, it looks great, actually, for a car that's, oh gosh, about 70 years old now. Estimate on this is between nine and £11,000. Another one of our uh, old friends here, 1960 Bentley S2. This is up for between seven and ten thousand pounds. This must be one of the cheapest Silver Clouds or Bentley um, S series cars that I've ever seen. Thing is, I can see a lot of evidence of sort of filler and things like that in here, but you could just tidy this up, and you'd be able to go to weddings and things in this. Careful, it doesn't swing out too much. A green leather interior with wood. I like that view, I like that very much. Yeah, I mean, it could be a bit of a risk of a massive car like this and a lot of bodywork to do, but 
If somebody, well, I'm sure, will absolutely love it. 1934 Rolls Royce 2025 Sports Saloon by William Arnold. There is the engine. I think it was a, a, a sort of four cylinder at this stage, as far as I know. Could be a six. Interesting, um, interesting kind of a manifold on there. Look at this, a very early beige leather interior viewers with wood. And I think that's a right hand gear change in there with a sort of handbrake. It's not really kind of my sort of thing, this, um, but I think at between 20 and 25,000 pounds, it's about right for something like this. It's amazing that you can you pick something like this up for about the same price as something like a Ford Escort RS Turbo. 1931 Ford Model A Coupe, uh, complete with dicky seat. This is in really nice condition, actually. Let's have a look at this dicky seat, shall we? Left-hand drive, of course, this one, so it would have been imported in America, I imagine, or somewhere like that. And a little place to put your foot as you get in. And even, I imagine that sort of winds up, winds down, and you can, if it's a luggage rack. Be a bit scary being in the back, though. I'm not sure I'd enjoy it very much if you went fast, but then again, these cars don't go very fast, do they? 1978, Jaguar XJC12, I think they uh, call these. Estimate between 80... It's for 14 and 18 thousand pounds. I think we've seen this one before. Why it's still here again, I don't know. The paint looks a lot better actually on um, video than it, it uh, is in real life. It's often the case actually with taking video of cars like this. Twin fuel tanks, I think this would have. Yup, it does. Voracious appetite for fuel. But if you want to sort of replicate what it was like to be Patrick Knee in the New Avengers on a budget, because this isn't a broad speed, just a standard one, then uh, here's your chance. Again, what is this 1974 Ford Cortina doing here? It's the 1600 automatic two-door, I think it's called an L Decor, and it's in really nice condition. Um, I forget the name of this colour, I think it's Daytona Yellow, yep, L Decor. Like a special edition based on the L, vinyl roof, sunroof, just absolutely amazing. Mileage is only 19,000 as well. Yeah, dead tone of yellow. So uh, between 12 and 15,000 pounds. 1990 Porsche 928S4. Between 14 and 17,000 pounds estimated. Let's just check the. Um, mileage 128,000 maintained by Porsche Wilmslow to 125,000 it's very nice prices of these are actually really going up and I'm not sure I'd be too concerned about I don't know 100,000 miles really for as long as it's been maintained because these cars were meant to just cruise along at very high speed and so that would uh, not concern me at all lot number 145 a 2004 Jaguar XK8 4.2 convertible with 88,000 miles on the clock. Guide price between seven and a half and nine and a half thousand pounds. We have got wood on the interior views. I'm afraid this is a, uh, a cream interior rather than a beige one, but it does seem to suit it. I and mean, we've actually got beige bits on the interior. So I think we will give this a pass. And actually the cream looks very nice with this uh, sort of blue paintwork. Again, I don't know what this is uh, still doing. I think we saw it before. Um, please, somebody buy it before I do. Lot number 126, a 1967 Jaguar 420. This was kind of like a facelifted uh, S-Type. The S-Types only ever came with, I think it was uh, the 3.4, 3.8 litre engine. So they were sold alongside this car, bizarrely, until 1968. Interior is very nice. That is, I think, beige leather with wood. Uh, we haven't got, got piping yet, or contrasting piping. This one is a manual. Uh, guide price between 10,000 and 14,000 pounds. I do like this color. We, I think we've seen it before again. So, yeah, a little bit too expensive for me, but I, I do like that, viewers. I like it rather a lot. I found my Self, once again repeating the same words, what is this still doing here? 
1978 Reliance Scimitar GTE. Um, yeah, this has got no reserve. It had no reserve last time. I know it's a little bit tatty and things like that, but what is it still doing here? Um, answers in the comments section below. Gonna have to skip these next two viewers because we can't talk about diesels on this channel. Thank you, Mayor of London. But we can have a look at uh, this Honda CRV from 2006. This is a very late uh, second generation CRV. Ian Seabrook from Hub Nut had one of, on his channel recently, as most of you know. That was actually on a, on a 7 plate. This, uh, yeah, this is a little bit earlier, but still a very late one for the second generation. It's the SE Executive, so it has all the toys. It's a two litre petrol. It's a manual as well, which is interesting. So we've got the crazy handbrake in there and things like that. Um, yes, yeah, so leather seats, air conditioning. Pitney table should be in there somewhere in the boot. Um, for between two and a half, three and a half thousand pounds, I think that will be a very good car for somebody. I've just read that um, the CRV was a category N due to the theft of the cat, which is a real shame. Hondas of this top, of that era did have really, you know, well-made Patrick converters. Also from this sort of era, 2001 Golf Mark IV, this is a V5, um, which isn't the registration document, it's the actual name of the, of the, uh, the engine, the five-cylinder engine. These aren't very common, actually, these. So most of the, the Golfs were four-cylinder. Uh, this is as between three and four thousand pounds. It shows you that actually Mark four golfs are gaining some classic status at the moment. This one is in really nice condition. Most of them were, you know, by now a bit tatty, um, rusty, and things. But this is this is really good. Very well equipped actually for a car like this. Uh, it sounds like it's had, um, you know, air conditioning sorted out. It's had track rod end, steering bushes, spark plugs, core packs, oil filter. Um, that is, um, that's pretty nice actually. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment below, and uh, we shall see you again very soon for more incorrect information.